Hey guys, we're just we're going to get things set up properly here, so just bear with us. Ask questions in the comments and I'll get to them at the end of the video. Hi! This is Phoebe. <laughs> I'm Phoebe. <laughs> well, while we're waiting, tell us a bit about you, Phoebe. Um, well, probably how most people know me now is I'm Kat's sister. What? Um, yeah. <laughs> how would you ever know? We don't look anything like. Who's Kat? Kat is your <laughs> wife. <laughs> Kind of a big deal. Um, I pretty much introduced them, and that's why they're together because of me. It's true. To be honest, it's true. Kind of a big deal. Um, I have two children: a boy who's seven and a girl who's three, Gracie and Rory. Um, and I also have a husband. Yep, still one of them too. <laughs> um, and I met Chris about six and a half years ago. This is six and a half years ago. He says five, <laughs> but it was about six and a half years ago because my son was about six months old when I decided I was going to do personal training um, through a mutual friend, auntie, babysitter. Hey, Mares, if you're watching. Um, and uh, start, he started coming out to my hometown to do personal training group sessions, and everything has gone from there. I've before that, I had never done any kind of personal training whatsoever. Um, my only sport interests were netball, so that's the only thing I've done really. And um, yeah, grew to really love it because obviously I saw results pretty quick. And um, then had my second child, and Chris helped me train through that as well, which is All right. Before we get to that, really important. <laughs> I was going back to when we started together. What was the big obstacles, the big problems you were looking to overcome back then? Um, so I put on 20 kilos uh, when I was pregnant. So I was very heavy and um, I wanted to get back to playing netball and being fit and I was just sick of the way I looked and a bit gross. Um, and yeah, Chris came out and we trialled three days a, a week, I think it was. Yeah, it was three yeah. days a week at first. Yeah. At a while. At a while, while, while. The footy and oval. The footy oval. So it was all outdoors. I brought my son with me and chucked him in a cage, pretty much. <laughs> and did it's my true. thing. It's true. It was in a cage. And loved it so much. So I then proceeded to do three days training with Chris um, in a group situation. And then I was doing two days netball training and then netball on Saturday. So I was training really hard. Did lose a heap of weight and did get super fit. But in... Looking back, I probably trained a little bit too hard, and um, I'm hypermobile in my joints, so I did get injured a little bit because I was not concentrating on form as well as I could have, and and that sort of gear and and that sort of stuff. And then yeah, got pregnant, and then went from there pretty much. All right, so you had a bit of a breather. Around pregnancy, obviously. Yeah, well. We stopped working together for a little bit there. Yeah. We've trained all the way up until. I think how long? It was about till... 30 weeks. Yeah, 30 weeks. And she's, we just gradually took things away as things got harder and harder with the old Braxton Hicks. Uh, yeah, they were fun. They fun were fantastic. But anyway, moving on. So, talking about now, so it's been five years. Things have changed for, for six and a half years, five years. From when we started together to now. How has the coaching changed? Like, what are you, what's um, the, the thing you need the most from the coaching that we give? So, I, back then I relied on three days a week, Chris telling me what to do. Um, when I stopped, pretty much I didn't know quite what to do with myself, what to work on the most, and um, didn't have that accountability, so I didn't do it. So fell back into a little bit of a hole for a little bit, um, which is normal. I was also just had a baby and that sort of stuff. So, But the main difference from back then to now is that um, I've learned actually how to fit fitness into my daily routine and without making it a chore because that's what I struggled with is time. Having two kids was a lot different to having just one time was really difficult. Chris and I fought about this quite a bit <laughs> because he's like, yeah. just make time, you'll be fine. If, you, if it's important to you, just make time. And then obviously his realisation as well as my own, I was like, I don't have the time, I can't do this. And getting more and more frustrated with um, not being 
as fit as I'd like to be and getting quite down about it. So Chris, obviously this is what he does, he, teaching us how to be accountable to ourselves and make daily movement a habit instead of a chore. Um, and it took me a long time to come to terms with that. And I fought with him a lot in the process because I would give him <laughs> excuses as to why I didn't do it every single day and why I can't do this and why I can't do that. But um, as usual, he's the majority of the time, this is probably the only time I'm ever going to say this, <laughs> he was right. <laughs> and I realised that doing small amounts of movement every single day is way better than killing yourself in the gym or wherever one or two times a week because then you have two or three days after it to not be able to move and you won't be able to do anything for those days. So Yeah, and sort of to be the best version of yourself it's about showing up every day and being that person. So yeah. that's how we sort of do it in the coaching group. And it really makes a difference as well. Yeah. I know that if I do that small amount of movement every morning I'm just like, oh sweet, I've I've done that so I'm not doing nothing because at times it would be so overwhelming doing things like going oh shit I've got to do this workout today yeah and not doing anything at all and then going well stuff that I've totally ruined a whole day whereas now I do the minimum and then if I'm feeling really good I'll just keep going with that hey dude <laughs> I'll keep doing going with that and do a proper workout and stuff like that if I'm feeling feeling really good and then the next day I'm just like oh this is not working I can't can't do too much today all right so since working together no. what have you achieved so it's been five years. Yeah. Six, six and a half years. So <laughs> I got so into exercise and um, and just feeling good about myself and wanting to then teach other people. So I actually studied to become a personal trainer. Yay! Yay! Which was um, probably one of the most rewarding things I've ever done, but it was also one of the stupidest things I've ever done because I, <laughs> I managed to enroll in this course just before I felt pregnant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because being a parent's not busy enough. No. And, and being pregnant and trying to be a personal trainer is not fun. <laughs> so it took me a little bit longer than it takes normal people, um, the average person, person I should say. And But I did it. I completed it. And I worked for Chris um, in two of his gyms and loved it. I um, really enjoyed the time as much as it was probably... Chris's most stressful time of his entire life. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it, um, which is more important. Um, <laughs> I learned so much from the speed rate. Chris. <laughs> no, you just can't. I'll be here. I'll be coming back. He's speed. So I learned um, a lot from Chris on uh, movement, and he's a real stiffler for form and how to do things properly. So. I my course didn't go too much into that, so I was pulled in a couple of different directions. Of um, Chris is like, no, no, you should be doing it this way, and my course was like, no, no, no don't worry about that. It'll be, it'll come later. Um, so I was really lucky that I got to sort of basically personal coaching from a personal trainer or a, a coach, um, and it made things. I felt like I was a little bit more knowledgeable than if I had tried to do it myself and just in generalised, do it in a gym or whatever. So um, I am I feel like myself quite lucky to be able to have like literally a someone I can go to every day and ask a question, should I be doing this or what do you think about that? Or literally, I've got dumb brain, can you try and explain this? That happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got dumb brain or can I ask a question? Is it important? Always oh, yeah. important. Yeah. Those days, fun times. But yeah, I loved working in the gym and I loved making people happy and seeing their um, the, the little changes, wins. the little wins, yeah. exactly, the tiny little wins, which made such a difference to them. And then they would go, oh, you know, it's only this much, but it is such a big deal because that, that person wouldn't have walked into a gym by themselves before and now they're killing it. Like a lot of my, our clients were stronger than me um, and end up being stronger than me which is what you want from a client yeah. you don't want to show off to them and say you'll never be like me <laughs> <laughs> you want them to be better than you you want them to be the best versions of themselves 
what else have you done? So you became a PT. Yeah. We did an obstacle race together. Yeah. Which you thought you'd never do. I did. I did an obstacle race. Um, First grade. Oh, A grade netball. A grade netball. I thought, yeah. Oh, I said, I'm more than a great netball. Kind of a big deal. Um, I did do really well, though, at netball in... Um, Just being able to handle place. it better. Yeah, being able to handle it better, not getting sore, and just being really happy with my sport and really happy with how I played and stuff like that. Um, what else have I done? Um, just attempted to do more things than I ever used to. Like I never more was confident. more confident in things, daily things. Like I never was interested in hiking. I was never interested in running. I still am not, but I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't like it, but sometimes Chris makes me do it. Um, but um, just overcoming my injuries was a really big thing for me as well because I was hypermobile. I am hypermobile. I tend to injure myself really easily. So netball is not a great sport for me to play but i'm pretty stubborn <laughs> and i really enjoy it so chris basically the, the goal was to get me through seasons of netball and not feel like i'm broken um, yeah so yeah all right we're going to move on to the quick fire round now and we're going to talk a little bit about well we talk about the red light zone a lot in our coaching groups where as a parent we look at three zones red light yellow light green light Red light is like the worst possible day you can think of. So what can you do in your worst possible day in the red light zone? And then yellow lights, generally where all parents live. You're not in a red zone, you, you don't, haven't got an acute injury or you're not super stressed out, but it's still kind of stressful, like general parent zone. And green light is like where parents never live. It's like holidays, you don't have kids, you're an athlete, food's cooked you're for you. You're 25. You're 25, you sleep 10 hours a night, everything's perfect. That's the green zone. So. Generally what we try and do in the coaching group is figure out the default foundation habits for your red zone. So if your red zone habits now, which is when you're super stressed out, is like chocolate, pizza, ice cream, Netflix, just all habits that don't live in alignment with the best version of you, we try and change them into better ones. So, Phoebe, good fire round. What's your red light version of movement? Um, so my red light would literally be one set of particular exercises that I know I have to work on. One set. What and would that be? What was, what's yours exercise what's my at the moment? Go -to? Okay, my exercise at the moment, I'm doing um, squats. Yeah. Yeah. Squats squat in. I want a bum. It's probably never going to happen. Um, <laughs> but I'll get there one day. Um, so it's squats and I'm really very weak in my arms. So I do um, kettlebell single arm lifts as well and rows. Um, and what else do I do? Probably cross between a single leg um, kettlebell deadlifts and um, single leg. Um, what am I doing? Single leg deadlifts and split bridge. Split bridge. Oh yeah. Um, I've got a really poor core and got really bad diastasis recti when I was pregnant, so I need to work on it um, a lot. And so I do leg lowers. I was doing planking, but I found that I. It wasn't too much. Yeah, it's probably a bit too much, and didn't find that I was hitting my core properly. So leg back to leg lowers, which I am actually getting better at, and I'm progressing. Yeah. Yay! Oh, um, well, for everyone who wants to know, leg lowers. It's when you're lying on your back, leg at 90 degrees in the air, seeing how low you can get it with your back staying flat on the floor. So for Phoebe, she could probably used to get to not even 45 no, degrees. No, not even 45, and it was a lot of it was bent leg as well. So, so what are you going to do now? I am pretty much straight leg, a bit lower than 45. Yeah. Yeah. And I can get a lot of reps out before I'm um, not able to breathe through them as well. And I used to do them holding my breath, and a big thing for me with um, that Chris taught me was uh, being able to breathe through your exercises. And if you can't, then you know that you, it's, you're not up to that stage yet. So, um, yeah, so yeah, that's what I do when, like literally in the mornings, I can jump out of bed and I know that if I don't do it in the morning, it's not going to happen. Um, very rarely do I get to night time and go, yeah, let's bust out a workout. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to be like that because I used to train at night time. So I worked my body to know that you've got to reserve some energy for that night time training. <laughs> so flipping that around and doing it in the morning, um, was a big struggle because in the morning I was like coffee, coffee, <laughs> that is all coffee. 
Um, so training myself to get out of bed, have a couple of sips of coffee, because let's be honest, it's still important, um, and then do those exercises. And depending on how I felt, I would do, like as I said, my red light would be literally one rep of it. Well, I mean, sorry, one set of um, maybe 10 reps of each exercise. If it felt good, I would do um, two sets or three sets and um, then work into my day as well. Like I'd also do the five minute snacks, but that's probably for the yellow light and the very rare green light that I get. Yeah, cool. So that's Phoebe's red light movement stuff. So that's what she's going to do on her worst possible day to make sure she shows up. Now, what's your red light nutrition habit or habits? How do you try and make sure you show up on the shittest day you can possibly have? Yeah. What's your go-to on a red light day? Um, so that's, it is a struggle for me because I'm an emotional eater, big time. Uh, I am too. Yeah, so on the red lights for me, all I want to do is eat shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of the time I still do. Which is normal. Which is Nothing normal. wrong with that. Everyone does it. And you still feel shit house after. You feel guilty and you actually feel worse than when you started. But you go, oh well, let's just, let's try and find different red light foods that I can have. So yeah. a lot of the time, like I know Chris is, is pizza and mine probably is sweet stuff so I tend to go for the really bad sweet stuff like your Tim Tams and things so, so how do you overcome that how I go about it is I probably still eat the sweet stuff but I actually eat the better sweet treats like I'll make them myself and yeah. make them you know um, refined sugar free or um, so it's not about stopping yeah. it just yeah. changing, changing the path it up, a little yeah. bit changing the path a bit and Making them still taste like they're naughty and make, yeah. and feel that emotional sort of probably what is ever is in your head that's making you feel like you need something sweet. So it um, you get that hit and you also go shit. I actually didn't eat that bad today. I'm yeah. feeling pretty good at the end of the day. I didn't drop down to that level and go let's just binge and eat crap all day. So yeah, so it doesn't blow out to something crazy. So yeah. when you're in the red zone, you still got your emotional eating triggers mm. it's completely normal everyone does it it's just figuring out a way for you to personally have a better option than what you usually do yeah. and that way you can move forward to where you want to be right yep. this is my favorite one red light re-energize habits so these are things like de-stressing meditation sleep what's your yep. go to red light one so when you're in a red light this is i reckon this is probably the most important thing um what i like to do to de-stress um would it's a few, it's a little bit weird. I <laughs> sleep really well, so I find that literally going to bed a bit earlier and getting that extra sleep um, is great because I don't actually have trouble falling asleep and sleeping. So when I do That's get awesome. the extra time, it's great. Mm. Um, yay for sleep. Yay for sleep. Um, you hear that? I'm also a vet nurse, so spending time with my dog and my animals and things really help me to de-stress. I, just find that they don't talk back to me. They don't ask me questions. They just want love. And so spending time <laughs> with them is... Um, lowers your stress. Is lowers my stress. And another huge one is for me, it's actually these people. Chris, Caddy, my two <laughs> other sisters, that really, they are a lot of fun and they, I think we help each other out on shit days when we just do dumb shit and make each other laugh. So Yeah, community. And you're really funny too. Community and support. Don't you? That usually gets people through a lot of red days. So if you're feeling like you're a bit alone on red days, that's when you know you need to grow and your support group, your super friends, to make sure you can get through those shit times. Yeah. All right. Cheers. We're going to go into the listener questions. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sandy's up first. All right. When you have a bit of muscle soreness after a workout, is it better to rest or push through it? This is good. This is a good one. It's based good on you doing your PT course. Yeah. So I kind of. Um, I don't question. think that you should, yeah, good, good question, thank you. Um, I don't think that you should push through it in such a way like you don't um, go into the gym the next day and go, oh, I've got to just really just work the shit out of this and um, stop myself feeling sore because you're going to get it the next day and you're going to break down, that's when you get injuries and stuff. Um, what I do highly recommend though is doing a, if you are, if you're working yourself up out that much that you're getting sore the next day, take it back a step maybe. but if you've done it and you like doing it and you like feeling that soreness, foam rolling is a massive thing to stop yourself feeling sore and strength, uh, lengthening your fascia and your muscles and things like that. 
um, and doing light work, light exercise. Big words, Friday. Yeah, big words. I, I like to work. <laughs> um, and doing a light session to just basically stretch out your muscles and yeah. get the lactic acid flowing through your muscles again so um, you don't have that second day really bad, can't sit on the toilet day. So, yeah, that's my, my go to. Or get but sometimes stuck, stuck on the toilet. Stuck on the toilet, much worse than not being able to get on the toilet. Um, Spear says bye. Spear says bye. <laughs> Um, Headed into a stranger. But yeah, sometimes it is also good to feel those that soreness because you know that you have done something. But I don't recommend doing it. Yeah, so that you can't. It's that. happening a lot. The, either the training loads too much and your body's not adapting to it properly. Yeah. But every now and then's fine. But don't go searching for it to look for the improvement. You don't need to be sore and make it show that you are training well. You can show up every day and never get sore, and you're still going to get better. Right. Bushes. Georgie, cousin Georgie. Oh, Georgie. She's probably Georgie. not watching. But how? You better be watching. All right. What are your tips for reducing snacking and grazing during the day? Oh, Georgie. That's a bad one. Okay, so. This, this is a good one. So, <laughs> I do a lot of snacking, which is bad. So, reducing snacking and grazing during the day. Um, making better choices in your main meals. So, um, <laughs> you get. <laughs> You're watching. You're watching. Yeah, go G. Um, so making better choices in your meals. So breakfast has to, um, you have to count everything in, like your, your fats and your um, protein. Yeah. yeah, got it. I got the words. Five years of knowledge. Yeah. Woo. Um, veggies. You just, and your veggies as well. So you have to hit those things straight off the bat so that you're not going to set yourself up for failure. The big thing is setting yourself up for failure during the day. So... Also taking away those options, so don't put them in front of you, don't have them in the fridge. Carby options. Carby options, sorry. The cereals not and things. Great, um, yeah, cereals, your treats, carby options, especially you, G. Um, <laughs> especially you, I'm talking to you. Sorry for everyone else. Georgie, our, my beautiful friend, has type 1 diabetes. Yeah, um, so this is different for everybody, especially for G, it's a little bit different. She's got to be careful what she does anyway. Yeah. But and then definitely balanced meals helps you stop snacking and yeah. takes away the feeling that you need to snack. Because a lot of people think we need yeah. to have snacks to be what we want to be. But and we don't need to snack if you don't want to. It's up to personal preference. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're feeling that like 3.30 artist or whatever they say it yeah. is, having like a, um, a tea, like a green tea, a peppermint tea is really good because it settles your gut and it also gives you a little bit of energy. No, um, co not coffee. And yeah, don't please don't have coffee. Not after, not after three. Yes, or midday if you're me. <laughs> yeah. I can't sleep for days. <laughs> um, but yeah, because I do, I struggled a lot with the um, with those shitty chocolates or whatever. Sweets. At, at, yeah, sweets. Snacks. Or even anything really. And if it has to be a snack, if you're really dying, carrot. Oh, yeah. like good old carrot. And hummus. And hummus, yeah. Just something that to balances it there. Try and balance whatever your veggies out with yeah. your protein, with your fats. Even if it's a snack, think protein, fats, veggies, and that will help you balance out to the next meal. And often if you think of what you've got to have for that snack, you're like, fuck, I don't feel like that. So you're <laughs> not going, yeah, I'm not going to have it. Yeah, awareness is another thing too. So if you know you're snacking a heap on not so good foods, so being aware, something to trigger you and go, I have a glass of water before I have my snack. And that glass of water makes you pause reassess what you're about to do and then if you still feel like you want to have that snack after you have the water have it anyway and then have a look at what you're going to do tomorrow but if you have that glass of water and you're like i actually don't feel like anything now then happy days and so obviously it's go about your day also you could be actually dehydrated but your yeah. body's telling you you have to eat something so and it's habitual snacking is habitual so if you've been doing it for years it will take a little while to not want to graze and snack so be patient with it it does take a little bit of time to get used to it but don't stress either if you have a little slip up one day. Just try again the next day and balance your meals out and get better again. Absolutely. And the next question from Georgie was, I'll say exactly the same way. Oh, what's her favorite exercise to do during a workout? Oh. Oh. Because I'm British. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> so I really like doing chin-ups because I it took me ages to get to it and I love it. And yeah. it makes me feel like I've achieved something that I never actually thought I could. And I, so I love doing it. I really love strength training above any other training. Um, as I said before, I hate running. 
um, and strength training is what works for me the best in the terms of I lost the most weight doing it and I got really strong and loved it so it's one of those things to especially like since V's is training at home where I'm coaching her online and a lot of other parents and if you ever try if you're listening and you're training by yourself at home it's defaulting to the things you enjoy doing so Steve's is strength training mine's strength training could be running it could be yeah. practicing netball gee it could be doing zumba in your lounge room whatever it is whatever it is that will get you up and move yeah. do the thing that you enjoy to do first yeah because if you don't like strength training and someone tells you you need to strength train you're going to find any excuse possible to not do it because you're going to rebel against it anyway. It might just not be your thing. It's like running. I yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. I'm still not a, like, I still don't want to go out for a run every day, but that's one of the things I have to force myself to, but happily go swing a kettlebell for five minutes. Yeah. All right, Carissa's next. Woo. Okay. Hi, Carissa, if you're watching. Yeah, hey. <laughs> Thermo. Hey. <laughs> What's the one exercise you never skip? The must the must one when the time when time pulls the motivating. So what's the one exercise you try and do when time is poor, motivation sucks, it's just gone, yep. what are you gonna show up and do every day? That really is squats for me or lunges. Lunges probably um, hit the spots a little bit more because it is something you can do wherever you are and you can incorporate them in a walk. Like I do um, a lot of lunging while I'm walking um, and it really hits my glutes and it is something that um, I need to work on a lot. <laughs> Ash, running is good. Running is not good. Really, really good. No. Running with you, Ash, is not good. No. You're too fit. Is it? Oh, what about your foot? You're not meant to run. No, no not Ash. Run oh, Ash. that Ash. Oh. <laughs> no. You can leave your running. Yep. I'll leave that behind. All right, so um, lunges and squats for the yeah, bum. Yeah, lunges and squats, what I do, because it, I feel that it hits the spots, hits my glutes more than anything, and I, yeah, I can do it wherever. Yeah. Then my default is PLP. It's the same, I tell everybody. It's not for everybody, because it's very traditional and it's the same thing every day, but my default's always been push-ups, lunge, and pull-up. They're the three exercises that if I do regularly enough, I always feel strong to do whatever it is I've got to do. I get exercise ADD, so I need something different. Um, so, like as I said, I can incorporate it into anything. So walking or whatever, squatting, yeah. Apples on, that's Amy's favorite one, apples. If anyone doesn't know, apples is when you squeeze your bum in the plank and it goes from apple sauce, which is wobbly, to apples, which is tight. I like the hand action. Nice. All right. And then, oh, I was going to talk about something really awesome then. Yeah. Default PLP. Default PLP. Oh, okay. So talking about that, we'll talk about PLP. And Phoebe's just said that she has training ADD. Strangely enough. This is kind of normal as well. There's some people who love traditional training, which is me. I'll show up every day and do the same exercise every day for six weeks, the same weights. I'm quite happy to go in and do that. While Phoebe has a different mindset where she needs a little bit of change. She's still happy doing strength training, but there needs to be something different in the workout every time she shows up <laughs> to make it exciting to do it, which is completely fine when you're trying to learn how to do this stuff yourself. The needs to match your personality type. Yeah. And what we're finding when I've been talking to Doggy and Cheryl from Lone Dog, it's the same with nutrition. So the way we look at the tra training is traditional, is sets and reps. Hybrid is the cross between doing your normal training program with a little finisher at the end, like swings to finish or little tire flips in the middle of your workout, just a little bit different. And then progressive is completely play-like where you just go to a park and you're hanging off things and just mucking around. It's playing like netball, you do exercise that way. That's how you want to do it. So traditional, hybrid, progressive. So that's training. And then if you look at nutrition, it's the same thing. So someone who's traditional like me, I have the same template for my healthy meals. You can eat cardboard any every kind, day. Any, whatever meat's in the fridge does not matter. And then spinach is the veggies. And then I mix it with probably the herb mayo from Safeway, which is fantastic or just a little bit of olive oil. And that's my, I'll eat that meal every single day because that's, I'm a traditionalist. But, Gotta be thieves different. need something different. Like I'm she's, like his wife, I actually enjoy to taste food. They, they can taste things, they, I yeah. can't taste things. So, they taste things. So in Phoebe's case, she needs variety in her food. So getting a meal plan for Phoebe's is probably the worst idea possible because she knows what's coming. Yeah. There's no variety in what's coming. 
She needs to be able to pick and make things as she goes, and that's learning how to build a meal off a template, which is basically our protein, fats, veggies, and carbs if you moved mm -hmm. enough. <laughs> so if you've ever done a training program or a nutrition program and it just did not sit with you, you got bored and you're looking for the, the shiny new object, that's okay. That's normal. That's your personality and there's a way to actually do it. You can actually train in a sense that there's something different every day and it's going to excite you to show up every day. For sure. If that all makes sense. Cat's, Cat's listening right now and Cat is one of these people. She'll Cat's thumbs up that yeah, stuff like crazy in a minute. But um, anything else you want to say? Well, I suppose if someone's a busy parent at home, struggling, yeah. where can they start? What can they do straight away? Um, today. They, today. Squats. Hey, squats. did I mention I like squats? Movement. Get, uh, movement. Go squats. for a walk. I know it's pretty cold, fresh out in the Albury area at the moment. Um, or one thing. Go one thing for movement. What's the yeah, easiest like thing? Squats for me. It's You can do it at home. There's Your form can be pretty on par unless you've got weights your form's pretty good anyway so don't even need it just stand yeah. up while you're watching this and squat with yep. your phone yep the hardest thing is starting once you start momentum's huge and do like five and yep. you've done it you've done it for a day and then nutrition what can i do today for nutrition um what could they do today for nutrition something easy easy to do add veggies into what whatever you're cooking today add one veggie. Veggies for the win. Add one yep. veggie. Whatever's in your veggie. fridge, add it to your meal. There you go. And something to re-energize them, to make them de-stress and feel more energetic. What's one thing they can do? Oh, today? that's really personal because people do it in a different way. So Personal. Yeah, like pretty different for what everyone likes. Let's, let's yeah. Cold shower. Cold shower. Cold Finish shower. your shower off with 15 seconds cold shower before you go to bed tonight. Yeah. That'll get you into a good body temp for you yep. to have a good sleep. Yeah. Because everyone has the heaters cranking at the that's moment. That's not easy so though. That's it's not really easy. Hard. That's it's, really hard to do. That's easy because you're already in the shower. Just turn it off. <laughs> oh. But go to the temperature that feels comfortable for you. Do it. And just remember the only thing to remember is to start. Make it easy yeah. to start because people wait for motivation to start. Yeah. Where it's actually the other way around. Once you start and show up every day, motivation yep. becomes comes to you from action, from doing things. You can't do nothing and hope motivation comes. Absolutely. Start and motivation will be there with yep. you as you travel on your journey. Damn straight. Totally agree with that because when I'm having a downer, it does tend to go on for a couple of days and I've got to lift myself out of it and just do like the minimum in the red light zone. I do that minimum and I'm like, oh, I felt really good. And you just keep going up and up and up for the next week or whatever until yeah. you just get into that zone and that habit where you're doing it anyway. It's all about showing up every yep. day. The easier it is to show up for you every day, the better, yep. the faster you will get to where you want to be. Yep. Anything else you want to share? Um, no, I don't think so. I think I'm good. It's Thanks awesome. for having me, everybody. Thanks for listening. The new website Bye. will be up soon. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.